Hi guys, Outlaw from Skeleton Crew. Today we're going to look at the KG9 by Arms Revolution and do a disassembly or a breakdown of the gun. So you open the box, there's a nice diagram that shows you all the parts, parts numbers in case you need to order new ones. In the box you find the gun, magazine, speed loader attachment, and a small bag of replacement parts. So this is an open bolt system. The gun is fairly well made, seems nice and solid. You start the disassembly by locking the bolt back to the rear. So to take this apart, you're going to need a 2.5 millimeter Allen key, which is going to be used on the front sight here unscrew this, it's going to release the front of the muzzle. And that just pulls right out. Next step is with a Phillips head screwdriver, you will unscrew this back screw. You want to be careful, there is a lock nut on there and it just flew off my table. Luckily enough, it bounced around and landed right at my feet. So it wasn't hard to find, but make sure you hold on to that piece so that your screw bolt stays in there nice and tight. The next part you're going to remove is the caulking handle that just unscrews itself. Once the caulking handle is removed, and the other screws are out, you can take off the dust cover and barrel shroud by popping up the back and sliding it forward over the barrel. So that is the action of the gun underneath the dust cover. When you pull the trigger, the bolt slides forward loading a BB and releasing gas to shoot that BB. There are three pins that hold the internals in the gun. The front pin is a little bit larger and might use, might require some force. It is a set pin with grooves on one side that will kind of lock into the polymer body. So you want to make sure you remember what side those grooves came out of. These other two pins are retention pins with springs inside and they have very little need for force. You just poke those through the body. They have a little indent around each of the pins on the top where the springs lock into. And you can just lift the internals right out of the body. So this is the polymer body. Uh, it's a really solid feel to it. There's a magazine release and catch on the inside. So these are the springs that hold in those retention pins for the body. In that slot there. You reassemble it, you will have to slide them through. Like that, and then once they're in, that's where they hold. They are a slightly different size, so you want to make sure that you keep the right spring with the right pin so that you don't have any issues when you reassemble it. Now there's a secondary dust cover on the top of the air nozzle mechanism held in with six screws. These are also Phillips head. When I disassemble um, an airsoft gun, I'll try to keep the parts in an orderly fashion just so I can put them back in the same place that they came from. I find that with the screws, you don't run into any cross-threading issues this way and just is better for the overall quality of the gun over time. Once all the screws are removed, you can slide the cover forward and you may need to use a Phillips head screwdriver to pry this off, just a little bit of pressure to get it over the lips on the side.
With that cover removed, you can now see the internal moving parts. First, you see this the return spring and the return spring guide. That rod goes all the way from the front to the back. Underneath is the air nozzle. In the front, you see the bucking chamber. That shows the air nozzle moving back and forth with the return springs there. Now these two little tabs on either side hold the springs into their channels. You just need to pry them off carefully. Now I'm not going to break this gun down any farther because I'm not, I don't want to get too far into it, but here I had to replace the springs earlier, so I figured I'd show you this. So there's the nozzle return spring. There's one on either side. And they fit inside of a little channel there on the side. They should slide easily in, and then you can put the tab back on. So reassembly is just doing all these steps in reverse. You're going to put the internal cover back on. I find it's easy to slide it over there, the nozzle and bolt and then slide it back. You will put all six of these Phillip head screws back into place. You want to make sure that these are tightened down well enough because it is moving a lot so you want to make sure the bolts are nice and tight so they don't vibrate loose. So here we have the bolt catch for the empty magazine indication. Inside the magazine has a follower that will push up this lever when there are no more BBs left. You can see there the little tab goes up. And when that tab is up and the bolt goes forward, it will not fully engage, it'll be stopped. That indicates that you need to reload, put a new magazine in. So now before you put the internals back into the lower receiver, you're going to replace these springs. They set in little channels that are cut out for them. Once you have the holes lined up in the springs, you can push the pins back in. They're easy enough to do by hand. And then the front pin, as you remember, has the grooves on it, so you want to insert it the same way that it came out. There are the grooves, so it'll go through. And then choose a little bit of pressure from a hammer, nice and soft, to make it flush. Next step is the barrel shroud dust cover. Slides over the barrel and snaps back down into place. You know, screw in the rear bolt that holds it in. Slide the muzzle piece back over the barrel, set the side on, and tighten it down. The last piece is the cocking handle, and screw that back onto the bolt. And the gun should function. So that is the disassembly and reassembly of the Arms Revolution KG9 gas blowback machine pistol. I didn't get too detailed in the air nozzle and all of that yet because I don't want to take it apart until I need to. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see the full review of the KG9 that I am working on currently.